I'm developing an application and access to control values of document properties in Word. The reason I'm using document properties is that they are replaced everywhere they're used when the contents change. Hi, this is Crystal. I shared code to list open Word documents. I also posted code and made a video about how to define and embed Word document properties and fields in Word, since the first step to automate from Access is to be able to do it in Word. Both links are in the video description. Today, we take it one step further and read what's selected in Word from Access. There are two Word documents open. One is a document with the content of several document properties for an RFP, Request for Proposal. The other document is an example with embedded fields. Let's see how Access does things. When I click List Open Documents, Access reads the names of the documents open in Word, populates a list box, selects the active document, and reads the selection. In this case, the selection is a custom document property for the contact name of the program manager. If I make the fields document active and read the selection, it's the result of the current date with a particular format. Since I changed the active document, Access also picked a different name in the list box. Let's take a look at the code that runs when read selection is chosen. There are comments at the top showing that global object variables are used for the Word application, the active document, and the selected field. These are defined to be public in a standard module. Next are comments listing other procedures that are called. The first two are already covered, list open documents and list Word documents reset. Read My Word Properties, which I'll probably rename, will be a future lesson. Today we're focusing on reading the selection, which we'll call Set Field in Range. Next, an object variable is defined for a word range. If early binding is being used, a range is dimensioned as word.range. Otherwise, it's as object. The isEarly conditional compiler constant is defined at the top of the module. Next, regular variables are defined. If the word application variable isn't set, go word, list open documents is called. If there aren't any open documents in Word, the list box is reset and the user is given a message. The name of the active document is read and the go doc object variable is changed if the user has changed the active document. Although code runs to read Word document properties, it doesn't have anything to do with selection, so we'll skip it for now. Now we clear the previous selection data on the form. Selection is the text in the selection. Result is the text of a field or document property, in case more is selected than that. I did spin my wheels for quite a time getting this code to show a field or property that wasn't completely in the selection, but it got so complex that I decided to make a rule that the whole value needed to be selected. I did get it to work, but it was not pretty. Field code is what word stores. If there is too much to display in the space, you can use the zoom box to see it all. Field format is specified, but doesn't have to be. Going back to the document with properties and reading the selection, we see this field is a document property field 
And now we have a property name. This one doesn't have a format specified. Let me pick one that does and read the selection. Now you're comfortable with the form controls, let's get back to the VBA code. Now we set the orange object variable to the range of the selection. The selection text is written on the form. I didn't know if a zero length string would need to be appended if nothing was selected, but it doesn't, so it's commented. Now the range is passed to set field in range. Although in this case it's the selection, I wanted this to be generic so that any range could be passed. Is early is tested to see if O field will be defined with early or late binding. The return value is initialized to false. Then for each is used to loop all the fields in the range fields. However, as soon as the first one is found, the code exits after setting the global field variable and the return value for the function to be true. Hey, I found it. I found one. <laughs> Back in the read selection code, String variables are initialized to empty strings, and a boolean to keep track of whether the field is also a document property is set to false. The result and field code are read from the global field variable, and the respective controls on the form are filled. The contents of the field code variable are then stripped down to get the name of the property or field and the format if there's one specified. In the Word Property video, I go into details about how these format codes are constructed, so I won't repeat that here. If the field is also a document property, then BDoc property flag is set to true. The S code variable now holds just a property or field name. Finally, the field name, property name, and field format are written to the form controls. There's a subform you don't see on the main form right now that lists the properties in the document, but that doesn't really have anything to do with the selection, so I commented it. That's it. The exit code runs, and we're done. The overall goal of this application is to make it easy to mark part of a Word document to be document properties so their values can be easily updated and controlled by Access. Access and Word work very well together. Thanks for joining me. If you want custom training, contact me, and I'd love to help you. Happy 2023! Have a great new year.